Welcome to the GibbsCam 5-Minute Demo. Today we're going to show you about air walls in GibbsCam. Now what air walls is, is the ability to allow the tool to go outside a wall. In this case, the walls here, a wall, single wall here, two walls here, and three walls here. So the first thing we want to do is extract the geometry off these uh, four pockets here. So I'm just going to extract the geometry off of these. Okay. And I'm just going to move this geometry up to the top surface and make it a little easier to work with. Okay, I want what I want to do now is create air walls on these sides here. Now typically if I was to machine this, it would keep the tool inside this wall. Well, we want to allow the tool to go outside the walls. There's a couple ways to make air walls. If you just want to make a single wall, for instance here, I can just right click and change it from change featured from wall to air. You can see it changes it to red that tells Gibbs that it, the tool can go outside this wall. Or multiple walls, you can go to modify and toggle wall air. You can see those two sides. Same thing here. And I can just do these all at the same time. Now you can see I have red walls here, which tells Gibbs the tool can go outside that wall. I'm going to bring in my first process here, the tool number one, which is a half inch end mill. I'm going to go down a half inch deep. And notice there's a tab that's bold here that says open sides. That is the same as the air wall. If we open up this open sides, you can see there's an overhang here, there. Now what overhang means is how far do you want the tool you want to allow Gibbs to bring the tool outside your air wall. Well, in this case, I'm using a half inch end mill, so I need to go at least 250. I usually go a little bit farther than that. Minimum cut, that's the minimum cut it's going to take. Normally, you don't need to change any numbers in there. But the clearance, the clearance means if I'm using an air wall, then Gibbs will plunge outside the wall and stay away from the air wall by a certain amount. I just put an eighth inch in there, which is fine. So I'm going to click on this side there, click on do it. You can see if I go to a top view, there's the tool path inside the wall. And the tool will always start outside the air wall. This one has the same depth here, so I'm just going to click on do it. Now this one's a little bit different. If I just click on do it there, you can see the tool is going to cut way inside here, which I don't really like that tool path that much. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to open up my next process here. This one here I'm going to do a zigzag. I'm going to do preferred same stroke, clear periphery, uh, before, not before the zigzag, so I'm going to uncheck that. And you can see the zigzag process now. You can put whatever angle you'd like on there. And then the last one, of course, is going to be with a three-quarter inch end mill. And again, we're going to do zigzag. I'm going to click on this side, click on do it. And you can see the toolpath goes this direction. Let's bring up cut part rendering here. And let me rewind it. You can see the toolpath there. Or zigzag. And then the uh, parallel side over here. If I turn on the geometry, overlay the geometry, you can see it's cleared all the way out past our stock on all four sides there. Now, of course, if you want to do this all at once, you could use an air wall. Just bring down the uh, tool down uh, past the air wall there. Do an offset with the outermost shape as boss. And there you have basically the same type of tool path, a little bit easier. But with the air walls, it gives you the ability to do uh, selective pockets and different depths and a few things like that. So that is Airwall. Thanks for watching the Gibbs Cam demo.